Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter 2 and continuing with the second segment that is 2.2, the test management in context. It's been a while, we are still working on these things but the next topic under this which we are covering today is 2.2.4, Managing Non-Functional Testing. Of course, we should realize uh, and recall some of the information from the foundation level that when it comes to the different test types, of course, we have functional and non-functional. So test manager is a single person who takes care of the entire testing life cycle, so must be held responsible for taking care of all the non-functional testing as well and uh, must determine because there are so many non-functional test levels of course we have 100 plus non-functional levels available with us in order to measure one or the other quality characteristics of a particular product and of course it becomes very crucial for the test manager to identify and determine that which non-functional levels of testing must be significant and important for the product which you are making or testing right because not everything will be executed for every individual product so just make sure being a manager you need to determine and decide that which quality characteristics are important or probably are applicable and those levels only must be executed because sometimes your non-functional levels can be very expensive as well or probably difficult to conduct or difficult to maintain so wise decisions must be made at this point of time uh, by the test manager in coordination with the test and technical test analyst. Because of course, test analyst takes care of the functional and technical test analyst takes care of the non-functional side of the product. But a test manager might be from any one of these domains, cannot be a master of both, of course. Like a person grew up with a particular environment, he knows only that particular environment the best. Now, of course, the test manager has to call off the other part in terms of getting contributions and taking necessary suggestions in order to determine uh, that what kind of levels would be conducted at this point of time. Of course, the functionals are limited, so we don't have to really get into the details. But when it comes to non-functional, of course, a technical test analyst must be contributing and supporting the test manager in order to determine what would be the most relevant. Now, in this case as well, the test manager should ask these analysts to consider the following factors before recommending that what non-functional levels to be conducted they should ask the test analyst to consider these factors and those are like stakeholder requirements is that something is there any non-functional parameter which might be uh, important for any other you know levels for example security performance usability reliability everything is independent but of course might have some kind of relationship so if there is any kind of dependency then we try to consider that required tooling what kind of infrastructure and tools support would be required in order to run a non-functional test environment of course the environment plays a vital role and could be very expensive in order to set it up uh, to conduct certain non-functional levels so make sure that you do consider these factor of course organizational factor which includes the people the team you have what kind of skill set and proficiency or past experience of conducting such levels do you have if you don't have probably you might have to outsource but yes there are alternatives to do that security of course what kind of security clauses do you have if it this is like you know some kind of policies or like when you talk about the banking applications a lot of these things are very important you know in terms of security so just consider that is that everything can be shared with someone or not everything can be shared believe me or not there are certain products with which is not shared within the organization to any other team as well so that's really critical coming to the next of course another important consideration for the test manager is how to integrate non-functional test into the software development life cycle of course most of the time we keep engaging ourselves with the functional testing and we generally make that common mistake to wait until all the functional tests are over are completed prior to non-functional testing and then we realize that we do not have enough enough time or probably when you start running those non-functional tests and you get woo surprises from the functional testing right so it's very really always recommended that a test manager must align these non-functional non activities much earlier in the life cycle 
So they should not just push the things that, okay, non-functional or hectic, so let's do it at the end. No, probably the security testers must be invited to review the design and the architecture. Even the performance testers must be invited to come and review the code at the unit level. Because these are the things which can actually begin much earlier in the life cycle rather than waiting for all the functional tests to get over and then you know get it started with execution and get surprised with unwanted degradation in the performance and security flaws. So even if you talk about some of the certain examples here is like you know usability reviews of user interface prototypes during the system design can be quite effective and at, uh, at identifying usability effects will be very easily uh, possible. That would create significant schedule problems if discovered towards the end of the system testing, of course, because by then your system must be ready and things to rework would require a lot of budget and of course, a lot of time. So in iterative lifecycle, things are slightly different. The pace of change and of iteration can make it difficult to focus on certain non-functional tests that require constructions of sophisticated test frameworks. Test design and implementation activities that take longer than the time scale of a single iteration should be organized as separate work activities outside of the iteration. Well, as a part of this, we just wanted to concentrate on the non-functional testing that how a test manager can consider that what are the non-functional things and how exactly we can align them uh, within our life cycle in order to make sure that we meet every expectations on time and uh, should not just say that, okay, manager responsibility is to only align the activities. Now, as a part of the activity, we do have functional and non-functional and various other things to be taken care of. And that's what we are targeting as a part of this particular chapter, this particular segment to understand very well in detail. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.